previous lesson, we know that adding, subtracting, and scalar multiplying of our matrices is pretty simple. You just need to know that the order of each of the matrix is the same as the other matrix to be able to perform those operations. Now, the different or the difference between multiplying and uh, addition, subtraction, and scalar multiplication is that you don't need the same order of matrix A and matrix B for you to be able to combine them. There's some series of steps or procedure that we need to do to be able to mul multiply two matrices. Now, the steps in multiplying matrices is pretty complex than adding subtracting, and even scalar multiplication. Now, in my examples right here, I have four matrices that we're going to combine today through multiplication. Now, if you'll notice, matrix A is a 2 by 2 matrix, B is a 2 by 3, C is a 3 by 2, and D is another 2 by 2. Even though they have different orders for their, or for this particular um, examples, we can still combine them by multiplication by first verifying if we can combine the two matrices together. Now, how do we verify if first matrix and second matrix is possible to multiply? So let's have the first example. Let's have A times B. So to multiply matrix A and B, we know that if this is addition and subtraction, it's not possible because they have different orders. Now in multiplication, it is a different story. So first, to verify if we can multiply A and B, just write out the order of matrix A and matrix B. Now it is very important that you don't interchange the order of each matrix because it's not going to work. So since matrix A is a 2 by 2 and matrix B is a 2 by 3, looking at the inner value of our two parentheses, since they are the same, therefore we can multiply a and B. So that's pretty simple. To verify if matrix A and matrix B can be multiplied to each other, just line up their orders and if the middle value are the same, then it's verified that we can multiply the two matrices. Now another important thing that you need to understand in the order of a matrix is that the outer number will dictate the order of the product of these two matrices. Since the outer number is a 2, and a 3, the product of A times B will be a 2 by 3 matrix. So that's why it is very important that you write out the order of the two matrices to be able to first verify if you can multiply them and two, to know the order of the product of the two matrices. Now for the steps in multiplying or actually multiplying matrix A and matrix B will be a little bit complex. So you need to uh, be patient on how to understand um, multiplying A and B. So here's the first step. The first step is to count the number of columns in your second matrix. So once again, it is the second matrix that you need to count the number of columns to. So if we have one, two, three number of columns for the second matrix, that means we're going to copy the first matrix three times. So we'll have here three sets of matrix A. So we have 2, 1, 3, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 2, 1, and 3, 1. Now, these numbers that you are seeing in our first copy is basically the first column of our second matrix. The second column has 4, 3, and we will multiply it horizontally to our first copy. So 4 and 3 will be multiplied horizontally to 2 times 4 and 1 and 3. And we'll also repeat the step to the second row of the first copy, which is 3 times 4 and 1 and 3. Now, after you multiply the first copy through the first column of the second matrix, you need to combine them through addition. And that is the second step. And you're going to repeat that step to each of the copy or remaining copies of your first step. So for the second copy, since the second column is 1, 1, we're going to multiply it horizontally to the first row and to the second column, I mean second um, row. Now for our third copy, which is 2, 1, 3, 1, the third column is 0 and 2, so we're going to multiply it horizontally through the first row, 0 and 2, and 0 and 2. 
Once again, it's very important that you are multiplying it in that particular order because if you multiply this vertically, your answer will be wrong. So make sure you're following each and every step on this particular process. Now, after we set up the process and multiplying the matrices, we can now simplify each of the entry in our matrix. So the first entry, simplify 2 times 4 plus 1 and 3 will give you 8 plus 3. The second entry, 3 times 4, which is 12. 1 times 3, which is 3. And the third entries, as follows, we'll have 2 plus 1, 3 plus 1, and we have 0 plus 2 and 0 plus 2. Now further simplifying our third matrix right here, it will give us the product of A times B, which gives us A plus 3, which is 11, 2 plus 1, which is 3, 0 plus 2, which is 2 for our first row, and for the second row we'll have 12 plus 3, which is 15, 3 plus 1, which is 4, and 0 plus 2, which is 2. Now true to what we did on our first verification process, the product of A times B should be a 2 by 3 matrix, and after doing the tedious steps of multiplying A and B, we now have a 2 by 3 matrix with this specific entry. And that's how we multiply two matrices with different orders. So it's pretty tedious and the steps are pretty long, but once you get the hang of it, it gets a little bit easier. So let's have the second example for our second practice set. Now we're still using the same entries from our previous board. So for number two, we are going to multiply B times A. Now matrix B is given by 410312, which is a two by three matrix, and matrix A is 2131, which is a two by two matrix. Now first step is to verify if you can combine B and A by multiplication. So by writing the order of the two matrices side by side, we found out that the inner value or the inner numerical value of our order is not the same. Therefore, we can no longer continue with our step. So that means B times A is null or empty because it is not possible to multiply matrix B and matrix A from our first step. So number two, it's null. Now for number three, Multiplying C times D, where in matrix C is 1, 3, 2, 4, 0, 1, and matrix D is 4, 0, negative 3, and 5, writing their orders side by side to verify if we can multiply them gives us the same numerical value for the inner parentheses. So that means we can combine C and D by multiplication. So we can proceed with our process. Now, to figure out or to have an idea, of the order of the product of these two matrices, we have 3 and 2 as our outer value. So we know that we are expecting a 3 by 2 matrix when we combine C and D. So now that we verified and we also had an idea of what our product will look like, let's start with the process. So this is matrix 1 and this is matrix 2. So the First step is to count the number of columns of matrix 2, which gives us two columns. That means we're going to copy the first matrix twice. So this is the first copy, and this is the second copy. Now the first column is 4 and negative 3, so we're going to multiply it horizontally. So we have 4, negative 3, 4, negative 3, 4, negative 3. And we're going to repeat that step to the second copy, but this time we are using the second column, which is 0 and 5. So we have 0, 5, 0, 5, 0, 5. Now simplifying each of the entry in our matrix, we'll have 4 minus 9, 2 times 4, which is 8, 4 times negative 3, which is negative 12, 0 minus 3, and this will be our first column. And for our second column, we have 0 plus 15, 0 plus 20, 0 plus 5, and simplifying our second matrix will give us the product of C times D. So the product of C times D, which is a 3 by 2 matrix, is negative 5, 15, negative 4, 20, negative 3, and 5. And that is how we multiply matrices with different orders.